Buenas, welcome to another video of the Daily Dose of NCLEX. Today we have a special topic. I mean, it's not so special, but we're gonna talk about hemodialysis. A topic that most of my students ask me about. Of course, when I flip the board, you've gotta see a question where we're gonna break down the question with the ultimate NCLEX algorithm, and then afterwards, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about nursing content when it comes to dialysis. But before we start, you know, I gotta give you a treat because you clicked on this video and you are watching it because you wanna get the value you want to pass the NCLEX on your very next attempt, all right? So this book is The Real NCLEX World versus NCLEX Textbooks. You know when my students go to the test center, after they get out of the test center, they text me or text one of the coaches the topics that they got on the real NCLEX. And what happens? Over the last period of 12 months, we have took screenshots of those text messages and I put them in one ebook of all the topics and I want to give you this ebook for free. Oh my goodness. All you have to do is click the link in the description box and get it, it is yours, enjoy it, all right? Listen, now let's flip the board and read the question. The nurse is teaching a patient about hemodialysis. What indicates that the teaching has been effective? Listen, with those type of questions, it's easy to get confused, all right? That's why I tell my students, with every question, you've gotta read it three times. The first time you are going to read it is general reading, right? The second time we're gonna read it, we're gonna look for keywords. So let me grab my red marker. And the third time we're gonna read it, we're gonna rephrase the question in our own words to just understand and make sure that we get what the examiner wants from us, all right? So the second time I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna look for keywords. So the nurse is teaching the patient about hemodiagnosis dialysis, right? That is a keyword because that's the main topic we're going to talk about. What indicates that the teaching has been effective? Oh my God, I'm looking for a correct statement. With those type of questions, because I'm looking, what, um, what indicates that the teaching has been effective, all right? So effective means that the patient really understood the patient teaching, right? Or the education. So I'm looking for the correct statement. Now, if the question said, what indicates that the teaching has not been effective or the patient did not understand, then I'm looking for the incorrect statement or the false statement, right? In this case, we're looking for the correct statement, so I'm gonna remove this, all right? So now, I'm gonna read the options. Option number one, I will be having weekly dialysis. Is it correct statement or not? To me, that is incorrect. Because those type of patients, when dialysis, they don't have weekly dialysis, they have three times a week, all right? And every time the patient goes for dialysis, it depends on their creatinine level, their potassium, their electrolytes, then you decide, or the provider decides if the session's gonna be like three hours, or four hours, or five hours. Sometimes it can go up to eight hours. So anywhere from, so three times a week, three to eight hours, all right? So this is a wrong statement, so this is a wrong answer. Option number two, muscle cramping is a common side effect of dialysis, all right? So muscle cramping, that's a keyword in this option. I mean, it's a true statement, because patients, when they go on dialysis, because of all the waste that we're taking out, all the electrolytes, sometimes those patients experience um, uh, muscle cramping, all right? So this is a correct statement. Obviously, this is the correct answer, but I'm gonna read other options. Maybe there's something I'm missing, all right? So, Option number three, I need to take the anti anticoagulant because dialysis slows down my clotting time, all right? So the patient needs to take anticoagulant because dialysis decreases clotting, clotting time, which is a wrong statement. Listen, during dialysis, the dialysate that we are using already has clotting factors, right? So you don't need to take any extra anticoagulant during the session. And even afterwards, you don't need to. Sometimes they use heparin with dialysis, right? With hemodialysis. And that is very important because you're using an external machine. You're taking the patient's blood out of his body into the machine, you're cleansing it, and you're giving it back to the patient, right? So they use heparin in those tubings so that the patient, you, you know, the blood does not clot in the machines, all right? But this is definitely a wrong statement because the patient does not need to be on anticoagulation. And the fourth one is dialysis will lessen the risk of getting infection, all right? Dialysis will lessen. No, all right? If you really pay attention and you know 
With dialysis, patients are at high risk for getting hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV. Even if the patient was tested and the machines were cleaned and you know all the disinfectants happen, the patient is still at risk to get an infection in terms of hepatitis B, C, and HIV, all right? So definitely this is a wrong statement. That leaves us with option number two, which is the right statement, all right? So this is how you break down a question when it comes to the NCLEX. Now, let me talk a little bit about nursing content when it comes to hemodialysis. If I want to visualize a dialysis patient, how do I visualize the dialysis patient, right? A dialysis unit, they're sitting on a table, right? Not a table, but like operating table, not like operating table. It's like a chair, you know when you donate blood you're gonna sit on that chair so it's similar thing right you elevate your legs and you're just sitting there you're relaxed now how am I going to start the dialysis I need an AV fistula right some patients who are temporary you know they had acute renal failure they were in a critical care unit they put temporary catheter right maybe subclavian or internal jugular or uh, maybe they have uh, I don't know temporary brachial not very common though, I haven't seen any one of them scratch it out, there's no break all right? But most of them, the chronic patients have an AV fistula in their, in their arm, right? Usually in uh, right arm or left arm. So those patients, you've gotta puncture them, right? So you've gotta access that AV fistula. Now there is a risk that that patient might lose blood, right? Because that AV fistula is literally this, this big. Those veins are this big and you're puncturing them. So there is a risk for blood, blood loss. So keep that in mind, all right? The sessions are three to eight hours, right? What are we doing during those sessions? We are washing out, you know, um, all the waste, all the extra fluids that is in the body because the kidneys cannot filtrate all that. Patients will have high potassium, will have high electrolytes, will have um, a lot of fluids, their creatinine level will be high, their BUN level will be high. So what we're trying to do with this session is we're trying to get the patient's electrolytes and enzymes back to normal, right? One more thing you need to know that dialysis patient do not lose any protein, all right? Do not lose any protein. Now, when it comes to nursing care, you've gotta understand that those patients are on heparinization, right? Those machines are heparinized. Now, you pay attention. That this does not mean that the patient is un, on anticoagulation. During the dialysis, hemodialysis process, those machines are heparinized. So you've gotta pay attention for risk of bleeding, all right? So bleeding from a puncture site or any other sites, hematuria or you know whatever the patient might complain of. But pay attention, during dialysis, there is a risk for bleeding. Now, another thing you need to pay attention when it comes to nursing care is that those patients will have correction in their electrolytes and fluids very rapidly, all right? So they might have some disequilibrium syndrome, so you've gotta pay attention. If you're helping a patient to stand up, maybe urinate in a urinal, or walk them to the bathroom, you've gotta pay attention that those patients might have disequilibrium syndrome. Now, the next thing that you need to pay attention to is never ever take labs from or venue puncture from the, the arm that has an AV fistula, right? Some, some patients use the catheter, if there's a catheter here, they use the catheter for blood withdrawal, which is fine if you're a highly skilled nurse and you're trained because, you know, anytime we want to access that catheter, it has to be very aseptic technique, all right? But never take blood from the hand that has the AV fistula, even if it's another vein on the side, you don't use it, you use the other arm. Another thing you need to pay attention to is blood pressure is never taken with the hand that has the AV fistula, all right? Now, you just need to understand that those hemodialysis procedures are very expensive, all right? So when you're hanging tubings here and there, and like you don't want to, the tubing, you, you need to handle them it properly. You don't wanna, you don't want it to fall on the ground, then you have to use another tubing, and then you charge that on the patient or the unit. Those procedures are very expensive, so always keep that thing in mind, all right? Now, the last thing when it comes to nursing care is the thrill and, let me see if I can pronounce this right, bruit, right? The thrill and the bruit that you need to assess before the patient, before you puncture the patient, right? So the thrill is when you put your hand on the AV fistula and you feel that vibration, all right? If you don't feel that vibration, that turbulence, something is wrong with the AV fistula. Now you don't prick the patient, you call a provider. Now another thing that you need to listen to is the bruit, right? You put the stethoscope on the AV fistula and you listen to a swishing sound like shh, 
all right? So those are very important assessments before you start pricking the patient or starting or poking the patient and start the hemodialysis process, all right? Listen, that is all you need to know about hemodialysis when it comes to the NCLEX. I wanna give you one more gift. See this ebook, the 300 Spartan Medication e-booklet. This book, or you know what I told you my students when they go to the test center after they get out, they text us the topics that they got on the real NCLEX. Guess what? They also text us the drugs that they got on the real NCLEX. And what did I do? Me and my colleague in the Alpha Slice team, Professor Aileen Burke. Oh my goodness, if you don't know Professor Aileen Burke, you've gotta pay attention. Go Google her right now. She's a nationwide well-known NCLEX copywriter. Me and her, we wrote the QBank with the new generation NCLEX questions for 2022, but forget about that. I'm talking about this ebook. We did the research for those 300 drugs and we put them in one ebook and we broke them down into you know, categories and families, the name of the drug, indication, side effects, and patient teaching, which is everything you need to know. Now, you will never, ever get a question wrong on the NCLEX. So again, I want to offer you this ebook or e-booklet. All you have to do is click the link in the description box and get it. It's gonna blow your mind away. And if you need any NCLEX help, I've got my free NCLEX webinar that shows you how I help thousands of students pass their NCLEX on the very next attempt. Make sure that you share this video with your friends. Tag me on your Instagram story at Alpha Slice at NCLEX webinar. Can't wait to see you on the next video of the Daily Dose of NCLEX. Love your face. Hi, my name is Amy. I took the NCLEX last week, December 9th, 2021, and I passed. I graduated nursing school in um, 2016, December, and uh, took the NCLEX for the first time, April 2017. After failing the NCLEX, I um, was absolutely devastated, and um, I just let a lot of time go by and I did not have the courage to take that exam again. I'd done a lot of research and um, I'd done New World a couple of times and um, people told me, you know, just take questions, just take questions. And um, I just didn't have the courage to take the exam again. I didn't think I knew, knew um, enough content. And um, finding Mo, oh my gosh, I was like, this guy has a lot of energy and I, want that energy back again. I used to be so excited about being in nursing school and learning and um, gosh, thank God I bought this review. Um, I enjoyed going through the episodes. Um, I learned a lot, it all came back and I was definitely prepared to take that exam again. Um, I made lots and lots and lots of notes. I reviewed my notes, I bought the test bundle. I, um, and I went into that exam and I did exactly what he said. And thank you, Mo. Um, I know you put up with a lot of my text messages and you were there for me. And I'll always remember that. And um, I'm super excited to go into training to be a nurse. Um, and I'm super excited that I'm part of the Alpha Slice family and that I'm gonna be on that wall too. And I know you all will if you take this exam, if you take this review and you follow it properly and do what he says, you will pass the exam on your next attempt. Thank you. Mm -hmm.